G'day, two videos in one week. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I have a Star Stuff World exclusive. It's the global release of the Star Adventurer 2. Hugely popular product. So stick around after my loud and obnoxious intro for more juicy details about the Star Adventurer 2. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Okay, so side by side, these appear to be identical. Uh, if I don't tell you which one is Star Adventurer 1 and which one is number 2, can you figure out which one's which? So star tracking mounts have been around for a while and they come in all sorts of different designs and sizes, but uh, what Skywatcher did really well, I think, is that they basically said, why don't we just make a very small German equatorial mount? And this is literally a mini equatorial mount. It does everything you would expect an equatorial mount to do and it has a five kilogram payload. So if you want to put a small camera on there, a DSLR or even a small telescope and even a guide scope, you can do deep astrophotography with this thing. In fact, this is probably a good first step before buying a lot of more expensive equipment, but still being able to get really nice deep exposures of the night sky. What I think a lot of people like about the Star Adventurer is that it's so small and portable. Uh, you can sneak this away on a family vacation and no one will even notice it tucked there under the socks. So how is the Star Adventurer 2 different? Uh, it's basically identical mechanically to the Star Adventurer 1. The giveaways, however, are the different modes on the dial here. There's a change in the rates. We've got a few extra modes here. And there is this, Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi is a funny thing in astrophotography. A lot of the time when people shove Wi-Fi into their products, it's just some kind of a gimmick. But I have to say, I've used this last night and having the Wi-Fi app and shutter control, it actually profoundly changes the way you use the Star Adventurer. And there's some really great benefits now. The app unlocks a few extra things you can do. I'm actually really lucky to have one of the first in, I believe it's the first in Australia. So thanks for sending me this, Skywatcher. Um, they did put the wrong sticker on the back here. This sticker is actually the quick reference guide for the old dial, not the new one. But I'm told that the actual release of the Star Adventurer 2 will have the correct sticker on there. The app is also pretty sparse and bare bones looking right now, but functionally it does everything it needs to. Uh, so I imagine over time they'll be upgrading this and we'll see it looking a bit better soon. Now you can control the shutter release from the app on your phone if you have the cable connected between here and your DSLR, which makes things a lot easier. And you can even set up profiles within the app for how many shots and how long the exposures are, that sort of thing. Once it's set up, apart from using the clutches to reframe your shots, you can stand back and control the exposures and the rates from your phone without bumping the gear. So there are two main ways you would use the Star Adventurer. One is obviously the normal, traditional way, using it as an equatorial mount uh, so that you can do deep exposures and stack those exposures. It's tracking the rotation of the sky so the stars don't blur. Now, the other really popular use of the Star Adventurer is for nighttime time lapses. So this is where you're not necessarily wanting to track the rotation of the sky. And this is something you can do by popping the latitude back using the different adapter in here instead of the rail, and you can have your camera horizontal. Obviously best with a ball head mount or something like that to give you more control over the framing of the shot. Again, it unlocks stuff you couldn't do before. It unlocks the ability to be able to precisely say how many degrees of motion you want over a certain period of time, and the app will automatically calculate that and change that rotation speed based on exactly what you want in that time lapse. I did an example of this last night where you can see me right here panning across the observatory as I was using it. And here I'm not tracking the rotation of the sky. I've told it to do a certain number of degrees over a certain amount of time. And the really great thing is it has another mode where you can actually stop the rotation while it's taking the exposure. So you can say that it can rotate 90 degrees over a certain period of time, but every time it stops to take a 30 second or 15 second shot, it will stop rotating and then start that rotation again, which really competes with a lot of other motion control time-lapse devices. So it's a really handy thing to have in your toolkit. What I really liked were the exposure profiles, which get saved in the app. So you can set up a smaller test run or a longer one, depending on what you want to do and load those and execute them really quickly. Here are some shots I took last night, the really rough polar alignment. I just eyeballed the South Celestial Pole and the latitude on the Star Adventurer 2. <music> 
This is a single 60 second exposure at 28 millimeters and ISO 3200, showing a nice wide view of the Milky Way taken from my driveway here in Australia. I think you can agree it's pretty deep. This is a lot of nice detail to come out of a single exposure. There's no post-processing here. This is the same view, but with five 60 second shots stacked and some star reduction and color adjustments to pull out that dark nebula and the dust we don't normally get to see. And I haven't done any post-processing noise reduction here. This is just how it came out of the stack. I decided to keep the treetop from the first single frame, so I've masked that back in. But of course, this is an equatorial mount, so we can go deeper. Now here is a single two minute unguided exposure at 135 millimeters with the same Canon 6D Mach 2 camera at 3200 ISO. I'm not using any filters here. This is just the visual spectrum. And here is the same view, but now I've stacked three exposures. So three two minute exposures and done some basic processing. You can see M8 Lagoon, Trifford, Amiga Nebula, War and Peace, and they're all kind of clustered around the Sagittarius star cloud. It's one of the most magnificent regions of the Milky Way. I think the addition of Wi-Fi on the Star Adventure 2 is not a gimmick at all. I think it's a great improvement to an already mechanically sound Star Tracker. So it makes sense for Star Adventure's sequel to be this kind of incremental improvement. Uh, the app needs some cosmetic work. It looks a little sparse right now, but it works just fine. The app and the new time-lapse control modes really improve the utility of this product, which was already super popular with Night Sky time-lapse photographers to begin with but it also possibly replaces the need for other dedicated motorized pan solutions. With the Star Adventure 2, you have this great portable equatorial mount, which doubles as a really useful time-lapse intervalometer and motion pan too. I really can't see any halfway serious nightscape photographer not having this in their toolkit. It really is the best product of its class. So thanks to Skywatcher for sponsoring this video and for letting me have a hands-on with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer 2 before anyone else in Australia. Now I have the Star Adventurer 1 um, and having used the Wi-Fi, I kind of really want to upgrade to the Star Adventurer 2. It really does make a difference in how I would use this thing. The Wi-Fi was super stable, the app was stable, everything just worked, which is what I like to see. From what I can see in the community, it's already a really well-loved and popular product. So I can see a lot of people like me are going to want to upgrade to the sequel. Hope you enjoyed that world exclusive and first hands-on video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.